This is my second video for pretty much tracking my, I'm pretty much just going to try to record the problems that I had issues or, or they were, they took the longest to solve or I had to actually go do some other research to figure out how to solve them. This was one of them, non-homogeneous uh, differential equation when you're giving initial conditions and using Laplace to solve for the problem you're giving the initial conditions of y of 0 equals one, 0 and y prime 0 equals 10 first step is I, I should have divided this entire equation by 2 to get the coefficient of 1 but I didn't do it there here I ended up having to do it later because I needed to do another step that required it. But let's go forward. Taking the Laplace of each element is pretty much just looking at the Laplace table and making sure you multiply by the coefficient. Nothing really unique there. And then after that, you plug the Laplace back into the original equation, which I got this. And also I plugged in the initial conditions. So 2, 2SY0 two canceled because that's 0. This 12 times Y0 canceled, that's 0. And this 2Y prime became 10 so you multiply 2 by 10 and that's when you get this and they simplify it further to that basically you have to get y of s alone you want to solve for that doing that I get this which this is just algebra basically adding 20 to both sides and then dividing by this quadratic equation to get y of s by itself and I'm left with this now basically you have to translate it back into the time domain by taking the inverse Laplace if you look at this and try to take the inverse Laplace of it there's no nothing on the table that matches it so basically we have to try to break it down I guess we'll start with this one because it's only one quadratic term here if we try to break this down into two factors you basically can't without you can do it but it'll be an imaginary term and if you get an imaginary term you pretty much have to break it down into something that is on the table which turns out to be either sine or cosine but I'm going to go back to that and you have two terms here so you have to break this up even further and by breaking this up you take partial fractions of just this side or this just this factor or fra fraction by doing that we have quadratic equation here we have a quadratic equation here so the solution is going to look like a s plus b over this term s squared plus 25 and then plus c s plus d over that quadratic equation equals this term here then you go through the factorial the partial fraction step by basically getting rid of the denominators you multiply each term by this denominator so if you do that here the s squared plus 25 will cancel leaving you with as plus b distributed over 2s squared plus 12s plus 50 and if you multiply these this denominator by this you get cs plus d times or distributed over s squared plus 25 basically one of these are going to cancel in partial fractions whatever's on the denominator will cancel on the numerator which 
in algebra. And once you do that, you basically factor, you distribute over the, uh, you're basically going to factor all this or distribute all this out and simplify it, which is what I did here. I get this, and there were some terms that I think. Oh no, nothing could, could be combined here. But I basically just distribute it out. Once I have this with partial fractions, you group your terms on the left with the terms on the right, meaning that you have s squared here. You look for s squared on the right. You take all your s squared terms on the left and and equate it to the s squared term on the right. Here, there was 2a plus c, and you take whatever is the coefficient of your variable here, which in this case it was 2a, and s squared here was c. So 2a plus c equals, look on the right side of the equation, there's no s cubed, or sorry, what was I saying squared? There's no s cubed on the right so that's equal to zero same with s squared we have 12a 2b and d so we that's going to be 12a plus 2b plus d equals on the right side there's no s squared so that's going to be zero take s we have 50a 12b 25c and that's it for the left. Write that down. Equals, look for S on this side. There's no S on that side, so equals to zero. Now for the constants, we have 50B and 25D. So 50B 50 50 plus 25D equals, look for constants on the right side. We have 300 as the constant. We have 300 here. And now we pretty much have to solve for A, B, C, and D. This was a 4x4 four four matrix. I could have used a matrix to solve it, but I thought it would just be easier to just try to use substitution, which is what I did here. So I looked for the, easy, the simplest term that was... The simplest term that was in multiple equations which was, I started with A. So I saw for A on this, which turned out to be A equals negative C over 2. And then I went to the next equation that had multiple terms, that had variables and multiple functions, which, uh, think was this one so I have see here and see here plugged in the value for a here which was negative C which was this equation here so I got negative 50 C divided by 2 plus 12 B plus 25 C equals 0 this is negative 25c plus 12b plus 25c. So negative 25 and plus 25 canceled, leaving you 12b equals 0. So from this, I can solve for b, which turned out to be b equals 0. Now that I have, basically I had b and I have a. So I want to go to the next equation with a and b, which was the s squared equation, and solve for d. Solving for D by plugging in C equals negative C over 2 and B equals 0 here. I got C equals negative 2 and B equals 0. Um, well, that was here. I had B equals 0, so yeah. I could solve for D because there's one term here basically.
and I can just immediately solve for D versus going to this and having a variable that I can plug into something. So yeah, that's how I did it. Solve for D here, which again, B was equal to zero. So, but I just factored out the equation here. Since B was equal to zero, I had 300 divided by 25, which is 12. Now that I have A, I have a concrete number for B, D, and I have a factor for C. There's only one more equation I can go back to anyway, to plug in these numbers, which was this, which was S squared, and plugging in what I had for S squared, I had A equals negative C over 2. Actually, I didn't plug in for A. I had B and D, basically. So I have D is 12 and B is equal to 0. So plug in 0 here and plug in 12 here. You get what I have here. 12A plus 2 times 0 plus 12 minus... Oh, no, that's 0. But, okay, plug in 0 here, 12 here, you get 12A plus 12 equals 0. Then you solve for A, you subtract 12 on both sides, you have negative 12 and 12A. 12A equals negative 12, solve for A. Oh, things, you can't see that. So, we plug in what we have here, 12A plus 2 times 0 plus 12 equals, that shouldn't be there, equals 0. So 12a plus 12 equals 0, solve for a, this is algebra, subtract 12 from both sides and divide by 12, you get negative 1. So I have negative 1 for a, but I still need to solve for c. I can plug into what I had originally here, which was negative, which was a equals negative c over 2. We plug in what we have here, we get negative 1 equals negative c over 2. Solve for c, multiply both sides by 2, we get negative 2 equals negative c. And divide by negative 1, we get c equals 2. So we have the four um, numerator, or we have the four um, constants that go in the numerator of the partial fractions. Negative 1, b equals 0, c equals 2, and d equals 12. Plug that back into what we got here. So we plug into we plug what we got into A here, B here, C here, and D here. And that gives us this. So now we have three fractions that we can get the in the uh, inverse applies for. This looks like Looking at, pretty much looking at the table, I got that this looks like E, basically E times cosine. Factor out the negative, we get E times cosine here. With this, we have a quadratic equation here and here. And with inverse applies, basically, if you looking at the denominator, if you have a quadratic equation, you're going to need to take the, you're going to need to complete the square. And this doesn't really look like anything yet. So completing the square, and this one was basically just negative cosine times 5t. This is from the table. And with this one, we have to basically get it into a form that looks like something on a table where we can solve. And doing that, we complete the square which I did, I pretty much wrote down each step. And here, for completing the square, you have to have a coefficient of one on the S, the uh, the squared term. So I divided the numerator and denominator by half. 
that gave me s plus 6 divided by s squared plus 6s plus 25. Once I have that, I can complete the square of this. Completing the square, you basically have to divide the middle term by 2. And then you have the number that you can group into a square, which is going to be just whatever your variable is. When this case is s plus 6 divided by 2 which is 3 squared plus this term minus the square of this so basically to get this grouped squared term you have to take this variable and add it to this divided by 2 which was 3 and then you have to take 3 and square 3 and subtract it by the, this number, which 3 squared is 9, so 25 minus 9. That gave us this, which was 20, S squared, sorry, S plus 3 squared plus 16. And we were left with basically S plus 6. Looking at this, this denominator looks like a cosine, e, e times cosine, but the numerator has to basically be equal to this. So we manipulate this numerator to make it look like this so we can take the, or use the integration table, or the, not integration table, but the inverse Laplace table. And by doing that, we basically this is s plus 3, we had s plus 6. To get s plus 3, we can basically break this up to s plus 3 plus 3, because 3 plus 3 equals 6. And we group the s plus 3, and looking at just this, it looks like something on the Laplace table. This plus 3 was broken up into using the basic properties of fractions. You can basically separate these because they both have the same denominator. You can group this as, like I did here, s plus 3 divided by the denominator plus 3 over the denominator. Since they're the same denominator, you can do that. You can just break them apart. And we have a term that we can take a Laplace easily of this one, but this one we still don't have a term that we can take easily. This one has no s term, but a, a constant. Looking at the Laplace table, e times co e times sine requires the square root of this to be on the, the, the numerator. And we basically have to manipulate the numerator to make it look like that term, which is what I did here. If you divide, basically you divide four by four divided by four which 4 is the square root of this. Now you have it looking like a term that is from the Laplace table. And since 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1, this doesn't change anything really. You can just basically you're, you're basically manipulating it however you can to get without changing the, the fraction to make it look like a term on the integration table. I'm not sure if or hopefully that was clear enough. And once I have it looking like a term on the integration table, I just filled it out. And I guess going back to this again, because this was the, the confusing part for me. It took me a while to search on what to do for this, because I've been out of school for seven years and I forgot this. Basically, you're manipulating the numerator individually, and then you're, you're manipulating the numerator and denominator individually to make it look like a term on a Laplace table. Most likely, you're gonna you're getting it to look like either e times something cosine or e times sine cosine. If you have an s on the numerator, it's gonna be cosine. If you have a constant with the quadratic on the denominator. If it's an imaginary term, it's going to be sine. 
basically you have to for the constant you factor out the constant if you can't break it up like if this was if the, the numerator was 16 we could we could have just factored out we could have broke up 16 into 4 times 4 so 4 would have been out here and then 4 would have been here but since it was 3 and we can't really do anything to that we're basically just gonna factor 3 out and just add 4 here 4 divided by 4 which gives us if you take away the, what you factored out gives us exactly what will appear on the table but this term actually does stay here because when you because of the, keeping this term here doesn't change the equation you have this and the other term you pay, we're basically doing the same thing taking the inverse of positive 20 divided by this to, take, to complete the square I have to divide by 2 this, that's why it would have been easier to do this in the beginning but to keep the equation without affecting anything I had to divide both numerator and denominator by 2 that leaves me with this and we have that same denominator here and we complete the square to make it look like something on the Laplace transform table which again was dividing the middle term by 2 and grouping s plus 6 divided by 2 squared plus 25 minus 3 squared Basically, it's, you're completing you're completing the square, which is taking them again, taking the middle term divided by two, grouping it with s plus six divided by two squared, and then you're going to take this term and square it and subtract it by this term. We get this again, and again looking at this. It looks, the denominator looks like something on the transform table. The numerator doesn't have an S term. So if you have the square root of this on the, the, the numerator, then this would have been a sign. But since we don't, we have to manipulate it again. Factor out this 10 and add a 4 here. And adding a 4, you have to make sure you remove the 4 by dividing it by 4. Now it looks like a term from the Laplace table and we take the Laplace of that and remember not to forget the factor. Take the Laplace, inverse the Laplace of this we get this and then basically I just simplified. I grouped in like terms, which was this, the, you know, these sign terms were like, so I grouped them to 3 plus 10 is 13 over 4, same denominator, so added fractions there, and this was the complete answer. That was a long problem.